Alrighty, so it's inevitable we were going to have to talk about the Lauren Bober thing. I wanted to wait until we had a little more information, and of course I had some personal stuff going on that made it hard to make videos when it was the hottest topic around. <laughs> Unlike the actual theater incident, we'll get into that. But let's talk about what's been going on with Lauren Bober. But first, let's get into, of course, the fan art section. The very first piece of fan art we have here is from... And I just need to pull this up because I'm bad at keeping my stuff up. A very gay Allosaurus. That I'm no longer Elliot NB, but I'm trying to do more art. This is Snake Slime Surus. Also, Dumpy Slime Surus. Jesus Christ. The last one we have here is from Mad Mutt. Slime Surus in the style of Stefan Gamal. Generated in Stable Diffusion. As always, everybody, thank you all for your fan art submissions. If you want your fan art to be shown in a future video, the best way to do so is to drop it into the fan art section of the Discord. With that all said, Crivet, thank you for giving me your points for an ara ara, you fucking degen. So that is a long ass boy. It was a long boy. It was a long boy. Let's go ahead and talk about what we got to talk about today where Lauren Bober is concerned. Uh, for those who don't know who Lauren Bober is, so she is actually, in case you did not know, she is an American politician, a businesswoman, a gun rights activist, and she's also a member of the Republican Party, for those who are not aware. She was registered as a Democrat, from 2006 till 2008, which I know is a weird thing given how she is right now, but still very, very important to note that there was at least a small portion of time where she was, in fact, a Democrat, kind of, sort of. So most of you probably know about her because of her COVID-19 policies or the arguments she's had against LGBTQ people. She opposed pretty much any crisis mitigation policies that tried to reduce the spread of COVID-19. Uh, she called vaccine mandates unconstitutional. She opposed them for the United States military. She compared any type of vaccination efforts to be the, <laughs> the work of needle Nazis. But... Because of the type of channel that we are and that we, the type of stuff we talk about on this channel all the time, y'all are probably most interested in how she talks about LGBTQ people. She opposes the Equality Act. She says that it promotes the supremacy of gays and says that trans women take scholarships and sports opportunities away from non-trans women. Ignoring the fact that, you know, after a year of HRT, the muscles, they get to about the same, they get to about the same level. Like, that's why the Olympics allows them. That's why the Olympics allow that at all. She opposes same-sex marriage. She even writes on her own campaign website that she is against the efforts to redefine marriage as anything other than the union of one man and one woman. She introduced a bill to ban all federal funding of research and publications into transgender health care for minors, asserting that that means that minors are being sexualized for horrific sexual research. Uh, and most of that was dealing with puberty blockers. So she also opposes all comprehensive sex education. She opposes abortion. She opposes federal funding of Planned Parenthood. This woman all around is a bit of a basket case when it comes to bad ideas. She even promotes things like Christian nationalism as well. In June 2022, she told the church audience that the church is supposed to direct the government. The government is not supposed to direct the church. The, the church is supposed to direct the government. These are things. These are things this bitch has said. Hi, Gigi. Hi. Come here. Come here, young child. My, my cat is just like, Dad, why are you getting angry at the screens? Why are you getting angry at the things with pretty lights? Small baby. She is a small baby. She is a good Gigi. But... Let's be honest, it's 2023. The real reason y'all are curious about anything involving Lauren Bober is this video. This video right here. This video of Lauren's date getting handsy with her and her reaching her hand, potentially, allegedly, between his legs. I mean, it's not even allegedly, it's right there. There's, there's two hands there. 
So this is the person who's worried about the corruption and sexualization of America. Th this person. It's definitely the drag shows that are the problem, not jerking off your date in public while your date gropes you in the back of a theater where children are present. No, no, definitely not. Definitely not. So let's go ahead. And aside from just watching the video, which we can do very easily, we just did it. It took 16 seconds. We can also go ahead and take a look at why this has all happened. The reports that have come out after that. The original reports said that, oh, well, she was causing a disturbance. And she said, yeah, I was, um, I was vaping in the back and that was bad. Maybe I shouldn't have been vaping in the back, but that's not, that's not vaping. That's just, that's just getting handsy with your date in a public area, which, uh, you know, I'm not kink shaming. I'm kink asking why, especially when there's kids involved. But let's go ahead and take a look here. It didn't look great for Lauren Bober when she got kicked out of a Denver theater for being disruptive during a performance of the Beetlejuice musical, or when video emerged of her being escorted out of the theater. But that was hardly the end of this saga. A second video showed Bober vaping in front of a pregnant woman, who claimed that the lawmaker refused to stop doing so when asked. But the story really went nuclear when a third surveillance video leaked, showing that Bober and her date were getting awfully comfortable with each other during the show. Which, of course, this is the video we've already seen. I don't think there's anything else here. Not really. And it feels weird that this is something that we should even be talking about. But I'm perfectly fine. I'm perfectly fine pointing out the hypocrisies of people who try to argue that human rights are actually bad. So unfortunately for Bober's campaign to rebrand herself as a normal lawmaker, more details like this keep on coming out. She's condemned drag shows in the past, but was co-groping at the Beetlejuice uh, with at the Beetlejuice musical with an Aspen bar owner whose establishment hosts drag shows and participates in an event called Aspen Gay Ski Week. Okay. Apparently, Bobert told TMZ, I learned to check party affiliations before you go on a date. But, but the pair have apparently been going to, out for months now? They've been... They've been going out for months now, and yet she didn't know basic stuff like that. Like, you are a politician. How did it never come up in conversation? In an interview with One American News Network, of course, Bobert, who has been arrested four times, said that she is a very no she has a very known animated personality. But the private incident is having a bigger impact on her professional life distracting her from her effort to impeach Biden. Days after the incident, she was removed from the list of speakers for the Texas Youth Summit later this month. Her date also faced some uh, some repercussions, with Bobert uh, detractors spamming his bar's Yelp page with bad reviews. A full incident report first obtained on the Denver Post has also been released. Jesus Christ. Hats off to the brave bar owner that made Bo Burr the laughing stock of the Republican Party, I guess? She has her defenders, though. In a long Facebook post published Monday, Bobert's ex-husband, Jason, said that he shared the blame for the incident, claiming that his acts of cheating broke her down. While it's odd to have your recent ex-husband come to your defense for getting handsy in public, Jason Bober is something of an expert in this realm, having once been arrested for exposing himself to a teenager at a bowling alley. At, uh, why? 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 What is... Why are people like this? We've got the incident report up here. Insider has a copy of it. I guess the copy of it's technically over here as well. We'll go and take a look at the incident report. Let's see what it says here. Said lower director name redactive received three different complaints about the complaints about the patron sitting in orc 
C, row E, seats 1 and 2, that they were vaping, singing, and causing a disturbance. Name redacted radioed for support on a super, uh, for a supervisor, and I responded to the location. The patrons were not at the seats when we arrived, and we waited until they returned. Once the patrons returned, I informed them that our usher team had noticed vaping and also that they were causing a disturbance the area with noise, singing, using cell phones, and that they need to be respectful to their neighbors. Since there was already multiple complaints, I informed the patrons that if there was another issue, that they should be asked to leave. The patrons were argumentative, saying that they were in concert with everyone around them. I again informed them it was a group experience and that they, they would be asked to leave if things continued. About five minutes into Act 2... Name Redacted radios that there had been another complaint about the patrons being loud at the time of the recording. I informed the security manager that the patrons were going to be asked to leave, and he accompanied me to the lower B vestibule. I contacted DPD and directed them to the location, but DPD took some time, so we met them in the lobby. I entered the name and told the patrons that I needed to speak to them outside the theater. Supervisor Name Redacted was inside the house and observing and accompanying me while I spoke to the patrons. They told me they would not leave. I told them that they need to leave the theater, and if they do not, they will be trespassing. The patrons said again they would not leave, and I told them I was going to get Denver police, and they said go get them. I walk out into the vestibule, lady, uh, radioed for support. And somebody said that their officer was already on the way. The patrons then left the theater on their own and said he told them they could get banned and they exited. Go ahead, call the cops. And then immediately you, you leave right afterwards. D why? <laughs> I walked out into the vestibule and radioed for support. I spoke to the patrons in the vestibule again, telling them they have to leave the property and they argue. They say stuff like, do you know who I am? And I am on the board and I will be contacting the mayor. I escort them with security and DPD outdoors into the Galleria and ask DPD to monitor them until they left the property. And they left after a couple of minutes. Just child, literal children literal, actual children. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand being this type of person. You're a politician. You're supposed to represent America. And instead you're sitting there going, oh, this worked on my daddy when I was 12 years old. It'll work here in the theater with police officers. While Congressman Ober's conduct in the theater was clearly inappropriate and disrespectful, we concluded that it does not warrant criminal prosecution said a spokesperson with the Denver District Attorney. So, at the very least, she's not getting criminally prosecuted for getting really, really, really handsy with her date. It just, it, it, it baffles me that this is the behavior of a person who's supposed to represent the United States. This is the behavior of somebody who's supposed to represent us. So she represents one of the literal dumbest counties in our state. Well, that doesn't surprise me then. Go ahead, call the police, followed directly by... Basically. That every human in Colorado knows who the hell she is, none of us want to know. It's like people here with Marjorie Taylor Greene. Like, I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand how you are against people living the way they want to live. Being happy, being able to get married. But this is the type of shit you get up to in public. Causing disturbances outside with, you know, just people who don't want to deal with your shit. And, again, getting awfully handsy in public at a musical where kids are present. <sighs> She's the one who does the obscene behavior and she projects that it's the trans people who are doing it. She married a man who exposes himself to teenagers in a bowling alley... But don't worry, she's the guy she's the girl who's going to freak out about the trans people and the LGBTQ people and oh my farking god. I like how there are some people on Twitter who are defending this going like that's it. Who else but Democrats would take this kind of footage in an attempt to embarrass a woman and a man who are legal consenting adults in a dark theater set up first thing comes to mind. Look, don't do sexy shit at the theater. I'm sorry. Like, it's it's a public place. 
There are people there that do not want to see your junk. This is not shit you do in a public place, especially not when children are present. These people are lucky. This, Lauren is lucky that, like, as we read here, that they didn't decide there was any criminal behavior there. So this is a pretty good this is pretty good campaign fodder. <laughs> Just imagine, Lauren Bober. I'm gonna feel up my own country. I'm gonna make my country feel good. Like, what do you? How do you? How do you spin that? How do you spend that? Do you take the do you take the maximum freedom narrative? Is that is that what you do here? Like how do you how do you spin that narrative to work in favor for the Republican Party? Said so you should do heavy petting in any theater, uh, let alone to the children's show. Said so pretty sure there are places you can go to do that kind of shit. It's called your fucking house. Yeah, you're you're adults. Like if you if you want to do the oh let's do something risky and in public, you choose a place that has no people at all, but is technically public. That way you don't I don't know expose yourself in front of a goddamn kid. It just ugh. The only thing I can really say is I I don't have much more to give in this particular conversation. Like, we're talking about a person that literally thinks that the church is supposed to direct the government. How does she think the church is going to direct her here? She is part of the government. <laughs> like, what does she think her church leaders are going to do here? But anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. And as always, everyone, insert end the video tagline here.